And that's where he's at now. You see how quickly he pivoted. He's a marketing guy now, right? All his pictures, you see he's in a suit, he's on stages. He's, you no, know, he's a marketer. That's who he is. Football is going to be a very small little bullet point on his resume five years from now. Because he didn't do anything in football. Oh, wait a minute. He played, he played D3. Uh, can, you, can you clear this? So when you say he doesn't care about NIL like I do from the heart, like, can you elaborate uh, on that? Uh, Charlene, let's pass it to you. Yeah. Uh, so Aswan, clearly you're passionate about NIL. This guy is not passionate about it. No way. He knows a lot about it. But a it was shark... an optimistic. He was just optimistic about his situation. Is that what you're saying? No, he wasn't optimistic at all. He was opportunistic. Op opportunistic. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, opportunistic. He took advantage of one situation that he had the same way that Mr. Baldwin did here. Dre has said his story so much, and I love his story because I relate to it from a non-athlete point of view. Dre happened to be kind of maybe good enough at one skill set at a particular very narrow window when everyone said he wasn't going to be able to do that. And he didn't even play in the NFL. He was like, fine, fuck it. I, I got benched, I whatever, the and NBA. then he played overseas. <laughs> I'm sorry, NBA, NBA, there you go. <laughs> NBA, and look at that, Dre, 30% better than that kid. Yeah, look at that, right? But the point is he still capitalized on it. But I, Dre, I don't, I hesitate to speak for you, for anybody else in this call. I'm guessing though, Dre, that you weren't so passionate about, about basketball that, that you were just like, oh my God, I'm going to be the next Kobe Bryant. Like I, I, maybe you did when you were a kid. I don't know. But when you no. got to college and looking at that, nobody was knocking on your door. I bet you were probably like, eh, I better get good at something or I got other options that are not great. Right. Yeah. That, that ship had sailed by about senior year of high school i figured i could play pro i knew it was probably gonna be overseas maybe i might get a shot at the nba and have a cup of coffee but i knew it wasn't going yeah. to like go to the hall of fame through basketball but the trajectory that i was on right and so therefore you leveraged the only opportunity you had which was you bet on yourself you used the one moment in time that you had you chose to actually expand that as one the reason i'm saying that about dre is because this guy did the same thing he had one moment in time he was like, well, this ain't going to be my life trajectory. So I'm going to use this to capitalize on it. He is not speaking the same language that you're speaking. You look at NNL, NIL as passion. a huge passion, right? This mm -hmm. guy is not making his money on passion. He's making his money on products. Okay. That makes sense now? That was a clarification yeah. for that. Yeah, go ahead yeah, and go that, back to Dre. That makes sense. And it, well, it helps me yeah. because of why I'm getting into the game in the first place, because it started with innovative teamwork which was the first book and that's what led me into the thought leadership world as it is so that was a clarification on that comment dre back to you yeah so i just wanted to make sure as one we're clear that we're here to help you with your the business so we got to make sure we separate what you're passionate about from what is actually the business so i like to for example run in 10k races i'm running another one next saturday and i'm probably gonna win and I like it. I enjoy it. It's fun. I need to work out every day. No, you can't win. You can't win, Dre, because you're not Kenyan. Sorry. I almost signed voice? up for the Coral Gables one. <laughs> yes, Coral Gables. Uh, I almost signed up for I'm that going one. For just because you said that, I might have to join just to. Going for, the, going for the three-peat this year. So it'll be three years in a row first place. So the whole point, though, is that's not my business. I don't really write that much about running. I might mention it if I can find an angle that I can bring it back to my business. Everything comes back to the business. So no matter what I'm talking about, I always bring it back to the business. So you got to figure out where you want to plant your flag, because again, people need to know who you are. They didn't know what you're about. And even when I shifted from basketball talk to business talk, I had to do a lot of business talk for a while to get people to really accept, okay, this is, this is where he's at now. Because before everybody knew me as the basketball guy. So you, if you keep moving the goalposts, people will never be clear as to who you are and what you're about. And therefore, those incoming calls, like Bell mentioned, the incoming calls happen because you're established as this person is about this. So that when someone goes and looks up you or they look up that, one or the other comes up. But if you keep moving, then they can't catch you. It's like you're like a boxer who keeps moving his head. Nobody can hit you. But actually, in this space, you want to get hit. Or you want to be stationary so they can find you. You get what I'm saying? You follow the metaphor? Yeah, I, I do. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think if if... And we talked about this a couple of months ago. Is innovative teamwork a big enough flag or big enough 